All right, I am literally pulling out of my parking lot or the parking lot of the hotel and this is what we see. Homeless encampments, big ones. I gotta admit, I, I was shocked. When we uh, exited the freeway to um, go to our hotel, you saw a homeless encampment right off the bat. And uh, wow, you can see it here too. All the trash left behind. It's crazy. Massive. Um, yeah, the, the Portland looked great from the freeway, but like I said, we exited the freeway, go to the first stop sign on our way to the hotel, and there was a homeless encampment. And then we pull into the hotel, you know, stayed for the night, and I'm pulling out of the parking lot to go to downtown Portland, and this is what you see right off the bat. It's insane, I've never seen this much. You can see it uh, over here. Look at that. This, I think, is supposed to be a park, but there's, you know, obviously no way that anybody's going to bring their kids to this. But, you know, I'm just driving down the street uh, about five miles out of downtown Portland, and you can just see it everywhere. I mean, I'm just kind of heading towards downtown a little bit. And, uh, you know, you can see it. It's everywhere. Wow. All right, well, I'm going to head into downtown and see what's going on in there. Okay, I've just exited the freeway, and um, I am in downtown now. You can see the buildings there. And, um, I mean, this is the first thing you see homeless encampments uh, I am on is this NATO NATO Parkway which runs alongside the river uh, the waterfront park which is right there you see the freeway I just came in uh, on but um, yeah I'm gonna drive a little bit here head into t uh, head into a deeper part of downtown get out on foot but um, I'm going to drive a couple blocks here. Yeah, this is what you see right off the freeway. I mean, look at all that. I don't know if I'm going to walk here or not. I don't think so. But um, yeah, you see people under the bridge. Yeah, you just see it everywhere, you know? Look at that. Oh, wow. Get around this truck. I mean, um, it's just part of life, I guess. People living on the streets. I mean, I understand people have need a place to sleep but uh, it just seems like there's a better solution in my opinion and Portland is not doing what needs to be done for these people all right I'm gonna go head into downtown a little farther and uh, do a walkabout I've parked the Bronco and in, in, in downtown now pretty much in the heart of it can see uh, I'm right here amongst the tallest buildings in the city it's real quiet the weather's beautiful it's probably hot mid 50s sunny no wind not bad weather for uh, mid February but I mean yeah I get out of the car and right away you see boarded up buildings storefronts Um, I'm going to head over to the Justice Center, which is where a lot of the protests happened here that you read about in the news. I'm actually real close to that. Yeah, I've seen this here and there. 
obviously victims to all the unrest that was here in downtown. One of the things I noticed driving into the uh, city center of Portland and if, while I'm here in the city is everything is defaced. We were driving on the freeway. I don't know how they did it, but a lot of the signs, you know, that point to the direction you want to go to have been defaced with graffiti. I mean, right on the freeway. Another example of what I'm talking about uh, as far as the defacement is concerned. I mean, everything down here has been spray painted. covered and defaced. I guess the city just figures the cost is too great to replace it. Give a view of where I'm at. That's the tallest building right there. In the city. You could tell it was really beautiful here at one point, but uh, there's a homeless guy right over there. I'll just leave him alone. Uh, obviously, the people that run the city have just or are not doing anything about it. It's pretty sad. I'm at the uh, Multnomah County Justice Center. Uh, anyway. This is where a lot of the, or the epicenter of where a lot of the unrest happened. You see the doorway into the building. It's, both of them are boarded up. It's quiet now. And the streets, or the businesses across the street, including a Starbucks, look calm and peaceful, and uh, they're not boarded up now. But uh, this building, all the glass is out. across the street to this building. Wow, look at this. They've had to barricade the entrance to this building. Looks like they have a fence up, security fence. And the people stay behind that. You can see a guy over here smoking. Obviously, this building needs high security. It's And yeah, and there's the uh, homeless encampment. It's right across from it. I'll zoom in a little on it. Uh, people just living there. Yeah, yeah. this building's got a lot of security around it. Okay, so I looked it up. This is the Mark Hatfield uh, U.S. Courthouse. So that would probably explain why there's a tremendous amount of security around it. I mean, it's like barricaded, like we're <laughs> post-apocalypse. We're trying to keep the people out. Look at it. Look at the inside there. Try to get you a view. And these are the uh, concrete barriers outside of this courthouse that is very much in operation. Stop killing people. Wow. All cops are, or all, I'm sorry, all cops are shopping. Huh. Some more free Palestine. You can see the entrance to the building. Boarded up. Yeah.
Mark O. Hatfield United States Courthouse. So that kind of explains what's going on here. And I hear people screaming in this dire direction. I don't know what that was. An interesting statue here at Fidelity National Title. It used to be a fountain. Not anymore, I guess. Get you a look at the building where I'm at right now. Still right here in downtown. Uh, when you cross the street, all these um, storefronts are empty and for lease. It's got a tram coming up. But anyway, uh, yeah. All these storefronts are along the ground level here are empty. So yeah, you just walk along the street and you'll see a tent right here and boarded up, more boarded up uh, storefront windows. It's everywhere you go. It's a beautiful old building and uh, it appears that it has been spared the wrath or if it was they fixed it and haven't boarded it up. Little church up here. Much of the city really is lovely, except for all the damage. It's quiet though. This is a fairly big city. I'm downtown, right in the middle of it. Not a lot of people walking around. So I've got some more tents uh, on the street. Really quiet. That's interesting, isn't it? A huge mural on this uh, building. And it's a beautiful building too. It says it's called the Roosevelt. I'm across the street. And I have to tell you, it's easy to do because there's very little traffic here in downtown Portland. And there's growth. You can see a building under construction there. So the city has uh, got economic activity, obviously. Very quiet down here, though. Yeah, Roosevelt. Going for truckers and free speech. Quite a few homeless congregated up this way. I'm going to avoid them. Really beautiful here. I mean, it, but then you'll walk up uh, upon a Wells Fargo and you see that their windows are boarded over. You see right there. I've crossed the street to that Wells Fargo. Yeah, you can see. Um, this is the doorway into the bank. Clearly they've been the target of some of the ire of the Antifa. And this Rite Aid Pharmacy is boarded up and locked. Looks like it's open. Maybe it just hasn't opened for the day yet. Or maybe there's a different entrance, I don't know. But you can't get in that way. And uh, this building is completely boarded up. Got a lot of graffiti here. Black, brown, love, pride. Yeah. And of course, this is a common sight right here.
I would rather see them help the person, you know, here in the city of Portland, help a guy like that, find him a shelter of some sort, and him not have to push a cart around the streets. Some of the public transport. This is Bryant Square. It is uh, completely closed off and barricaded. So the general public just doesn't get to go here anymore because uh, I believe this was a meeting spot for a lot of the violence. Again, it looks like uh, the post-apocalypse, doesn't it? This is parking. Obviously, this parking garage is closed. I mean, I don't know if anybody's in the sleeping bag. I hope not. No, it doesn't look like it. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, there was somebody in there asleep. Wow. <laughs> wow. It's after 11, too. Kind of getting late in the day. Somebody's pitched a tent, or several tents. You see several here. You know, right on the street. Yeah, I'm not gonna get any closer. I love food truck food. I just had breakfast, so I'm, I'm not gonna have any, but. I'm not sure what's in this area. It looks like another park up here. But they've got several food trucks getting ready for lunch. It's getting close to lunchtime. It's really neat how they painted the street. Well, they're at least attempting to keep the trash off the streets. Got these trash bins here. sure what this building is. Camera surveillance and another boarded up storefront building. I think that used to be a shoe store, a Vans shoe store. Looks like they are closed. That's something. see this everywhere down here. The store is open. It says market open. But uh, you can't see in it. Its windows are boarded up. Huh. Look at this. Wow. Open. Look at the door. Cracked glass. One of the tallest buildings in the downtown area here. And this is what's surrounding it. This was, but it is closed. I look up through downtown Portland. And I'm going to cross the street here. Now, what 
whatever this ability was, it is closed now. For lease. I don't know, good luck with that. And some more, it's like another homeless encampment. I guess they put places for them to pitch their tents because they look like, you know, you gotta have hooks for these kind of tents. I guess they give them spaces where they can, uh, can pitch their tents. And um, this is where they live. City resident. Look at these beautiful buildings here. Yeah, you just see trash kind of thrown on the ground. I have seen people uh, out here cleaning up the city though. So another building, it's empty. Oh, they've been up on the roof there. See some graffiti up there. I'm not sure what this building was, but uh, it's no longer operating. Yeah, I got some real old buildings here. Looks like they have a cafe across the street. It's a little bit of street dining, but I mean. Uh, when you're sitting at your table, this is what you're looking at. I don't know if I would want to sit on the outside at that place. And of course, yet another tent. It's so strange, you know, some people just, they just pitch tents anywhere. Right in the corner of these busy intersections. Amazing. There's another one there. Pete's Market. A lot of trash here. And this is, you can see what I'm seeing. So I walk along the street here. It's filthy. This is a parking garage and it's an operational. You can see cars up there, but it is barricaded all around. You know, like a war zone. I'm outside a Louis Vuitton. And yeah, it's, it's boarded up. Interesting, uh, paintings on there, the wood that they've boarded up the store with. And then, um, look here, you go across the street, and I think this is an Apple store, but it is completely barricaded. Look at this. Huge high fence around it. Wow. You can see people uh, selling, I guess it's uh, Apple products, yeah. And it's got glass. That's just sheet glass, so you can see in. But it's got a real high metal fence all around. Looks like they just opened the doors at night. Yeah, it's an Apple store. It's kind of sad that they have to do this, the resort to this to keep their business open. You see the concrete barriers so people can't push the fence in. Whoa, that's all I gotta say. Huh. I just, I don't understand just city leaders allowing this. Okay, I've seen enough. I'm going to uh, leave downtown. Uh, my thoughts are that it's beautiful here. It's a beautiful downtown. It's just uh, jarring to see the 
tents, you know, everywhere, homeless walking around, the graffiti. You wonder why they allow this. I don't, don't really understand it. Why they don't, you know, clean up this place and uh, put these people somewhere. Wow. You just, you hate to see one of America's great cities, a beautiful city, look like this. Anyway, on to my next destination. All right, I'm heading to the Red House on Mississippi. You may or may not be familiar with it. You probably remember Chaz in Seattle, that uh, autonomous zone that was set up. Or well, Portland had their own version of it. There was a family here, an, uh, an African indigenous family, that uh, had a house here, a red house that they'd lived in for 65 years. Now their son got in some trouble. He uh, in a quarter. He got in a wreck and um, driving without a driver's license, and uh, he killed the driver and injured the wife. So uh, the family took out a loan against the house to pay his legal fees. And um, turn right onto North Humboldt Street. Okay. Then turn left onto North Albina Avenue. Serious, uh, giving me directions. And um, anyway, the loan was sold, and so uh, the family started getting two bills for the mortgage. So they just stopped paying. Uh, they put it in an escrow, and then um, what happened was the house was foreclosed on, and so residents, certain residents in the city created their own uh, autonomous zone around this red house and um, there was a big standoff with police and uh, of course the protesters it was quite the big deal so I want to I just want to drive up to the house and see the destination it destination is on your left all right 406 North Mississippi Avenue okay all right Siri stop talking so according to Siri I'm almost there should be driving up on it any second um, see what it looks like now. I'm just curious. Remember reading about it in the newspaper. Uh, it was quite the thing. And there was quite a bit of violence. Yeah, here it is right here. You recognize it immediately because remember seeing it in the um, on the news constantly. This is it right here. Defund the police. Defund the police. Wow. Anyway, I'm still in the neighborhood. I'm going to drive up and take another look at it. But i um, not sure what happened. I know GoFundMe raised a bunch of money for the family. Over 300000 And they were going to pay the, uh, pay the mortgage. And I think the family declined. Decided to keep the money and buy a house somewhere else. I'm not sure if that's what happened. But um, you can still see... Or you can see that it's still kind of a uh, a spot for uh, BLM and uh, Antifa and, you know, obviously the house is, I mean, look at it. The house is not habitable. It's uh, boarded over. Not seeing a lot of people around it, but obviously there's no one living here. Anyway, yeah, I just wanted to see it for myself. Defund the police, defund the police. Wow, amazing. All right. That was pretty cool. I'm gonna head back to the hotel. All right, our time in Portland, Oregon is done. Time to uh, give you a review of the room. We stayed at the Best Western, right here in Portland. What'd you think? I mean, it was okay. It was okay. The room is clean and it's quite roomy. The gym would have been fine if they weren't missing weights, which yeah. annoys the heck out of me. They should just check it and replace them, you know? It, they're not that expensive to replace, you right. know? So. Well, yeah, and you know, the room's pretty clean. It's got some room to it. Uh, breakfast was mediocre. You, you know, they, you basically go up to a doorway and tell the lady what you want. She plops it on a plate. Place has a nice big uh, hot tub. Wasn't working. <laughs> it's really annoying. So that's gonna get them docked a little bit. Uh, so, you know, and it's kind of dirty, but, uh, you know, the you parking the room, lot. You just said the room was clean. I'm talking about, like, the outdoor, the parking lot. Mm. But what I'm finding in Portland is it's dirty everywhere, so it's just par for the course here. It's probably all the, it's probably the Hobo Hotel across the street. I mean, yeah, you got 
huge homeless encampments just a block away. It's insane. Right across the street. Yeah, it's insane here. So, ugh. but anyway, all right. So, uh, what do you think? What's your rating? Four point one. I'm not gonna go that high. I'm gonna go like a three point five. <laughs> Uh, you know, with a crappy breakfast and a broken hot tub and, uh, you know, pretty good Wi-Fi. Anyway. All right, so that's it. We are heading to Seattle, Washington next. Be looking. Looking. <laughs> Be looking for that video.